Assalamu alaikum. What are the first words that come to your mind when you hear the name Imam Bukhari? I'm guessing it's along the lines of Hadith scholar of Sahih Bukhari. What about when you hear the name Khalid bin Walid? I'm guessing the warrior who is the sword of Allah. How about Michael Jordan? Basketball, right? Why is it that when we hear about certain people, the same image comes up for all of us? It's because these people didn't just settle for being mediocre like everyone else. No, they were on a different standard. They were A stars. Let's take the example of Imam Bukhari. As a young child, he sat in circles of knowledge learning from his local scholars. By the time he was 16, he had memorized 2,000 ahadith. He went on hajj with his mother and older brother. When he saw scholars from all over the world teaching in Mecca, he realized that this place was a gold mine for learning knowledge. He begged his mom to allow him to stay in Mecca, so she agreed. He lived in Mecca and Medina for a few years where he collected hadith from the leading scholars. He traveled extensively seeking knowledge in Baghdad, Egypt and other major learning centers of the time. He learned ahadith from over a thousand scholars. He even sat with Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal, one of the four great Imams. The interesting thing about Imam Bukhari is that as he compiled ahadith, he raised the bar. He had far stricter rules than any other hadith scholar for accepting a hadith as authentic. For every hadith, he studied in depth the lives of all the people in the chain of narration and he paid meticulous attention to detail when he compiled the hadith. For every single hadith out of 7,000 he placed in his Sahih Bukhari, he performed two rak'ah of prayers for istikhara. This hadith collection took him 16 years to complete. His greatest work, Sahih Bukhari, is universally considered the most authentic collection of ahadith. In fact, it's recognized as the most authentic book after the Quran. Think about that. This means his book is considered the most authentic book ever written by mankind. As a result of his incredible effort, we can now learn about the words and the actions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam even 1400 years after his life. Imam Bukhari is an amazing example of someone who achieved mastery. But do we all need to reach that level? After all, what's wrong with being average? The issue is that if we love Allah, then we should love what Allah loves. So what is that? The Prophet ﷺ said, Verily, Allah loves excellence in all things. Allah wants us to reach that level of ihsan, excellence. From the hadith, we know that ihsan is to worship Allah as if you see Him. And if you do not see Him, then know that He sees you. In practical terms, this means you doing your best because you know Allah is watching. Don't worry, this doesn't mean you have to be perfect because perfection is only reserved for Allah. But it does mean that if you want to have the most fulfilling life and truly aim for Jannatul Firdaus, the highest level of paradise, then being average can't be your standard. Now most people can raise their standard for a moment and then slip back to being average. Have there been times in your lives where your concentration in prayer spiked up but after coming down from the high, it stays low. Mastery is not about being a one-hit wonder. It is to stay consistently in the state of Ihsan. It's to make Ihsan part of your DNA. It's to make Ihsan your default standard. So what can you do to reach mastery in any area of your life? Here are seven steps to master anything. Step one, purify your intentions. Imagine you want to reach mastery in public speaking. Before taking any action, you need to have sincere intentions. Because without ikhlas, sincerity, your public speaking won't benefit you in this life or the next. Make dua to Allah to help you to purify your intentions and to accept your efforts and make a specific intention 
to do your public speaking with ihsan. Remember, when you reach mastery, you'll no longer be average. So you need to be ready to stand out. This means that you should not be phased by criticism or praise by other people. The only way you'll be able to do this is by ensuring you're doing this solely for the pleasure of Allah. Step two, aim for a star. Seek out resources such as books and courses that will help you reach excellence in public speaking. For your actions to be accepted by Allah, you also need to stick to the sunnah. For example, you won't be able to reach a star if you do public speaking in bars with alcohol. Take action in the right way. Remember, it's not practice makes perfect, it's perfect practice makes perfect. Because if you practice the wrong way of doing something, like public speaking in a monotone voice, you'll just get really good at doing it the wrong way. Step three, laser focus. Choose one area and devote yourself to achieving mastery in it. Don't be a dabbler. The dabbler is someone who gets really excited about something new, like public speaking for example. He quickly makes progress, but when he faces obstacles and no longer sees instant results, he quits. Then he moves on to something else, like tennis, and he keeps going through this cycle over and over again, hopping from one thing to another. The master on the other hand expects the obstacles to come. When he no longer sees instant results in his public speaking, he gets help. He stays laser focused on public speaking and keeps going until he reaches mastery. Step four, observe role models. The master gets help by finding a mentor. Look for someone who has already achieved what you want, which in this case would be exceptional public speaking. Learn from them rather than from your own trial and error. This will save you a lot of time and stress. At first, just watch your mentor in action. Use deep observation. Find out exactly what they do before, during and after their public speaking that makes them so successful at it. Remember, this step is not about showing yourself off to others. It's about you learning as much as you can from others. Step five, practice, practice, practice. Based on what you observed, start doing public speaking yourself. Keep doing it again and again. There's no way you can achieve mastery, which is making Ihsan part of your DNA without thousands of hours of practice. The more public speaking you do, the more you will shine at it. Step six, be patient. You won't be able to give the time required for mastery without patience. Practice your public speaking with consistency and care. Don't give up when you face obstacles. Don't give up when you're criticized by others. Be patient. Step seven, add your touch. With all those hours of practice, you'll start to find new and unique ways to raise the bar even further. Add your own personalized touch to take your public speaking to an exceptional level. And this is when you reach mastery when Ihsan, excellence, has become part of your DNA. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it beneficial. If you did, you can do two things to continue your mastery journey. Firstly, you can subscribe to the YouTube channel by clicking here. When you subscribe, you'll get regular videos that will help you achieve breakthroughs in your life, inshallah. Secondly, you can join the online mastery group by clicking the link below. When you join, We'll send you inspirational email reminders, podcasts, updates, and free resources that you won't get on YouTube. We look forward to seeing you on the next video, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum.